Hello, everybody. This is a mini lesson on understanding why there are so many words for family members in Japanese. To understand how this works, there are two principles that you need to begin to comprehend. One is on the idea that age matters. So, for example, we don't just say the word sister. We have a different word for one's older sister versus one's younger sister. In the same way for brother, we have a word for older brother and younger brother. So it matters the position of your birth. Um, this is very important as we'll get into later through this unit. Um, and there are specific words that are different. So rather than just saying older or younger sister, there's actually a word for it. The second principle is one that requires a little bit of Japanese knowledge. So first, the idea behind the word for family is the kanji ka zoku. It's two kanji. The left side kanji here with the rooftop on the top is house. The second one, which has a radical in this lower right hand corner of an arrow or component, rather kanji component, and this would mean overall as a tribe. So a house tribe is a family, which makes sense. So one's kazoku is one's house tribe. And the graphic on the right here, the inner circle kanji, is referred to as uchi. This kanji's reading is uchi, and it just simply means inside. So think of it as your inner circle. Those are the family members that you have in your family. They are referred to as your uchi, as opposed to soto. Soto are those outside of your family. So the idea here is that there isn't just a word for mother. There's two words for mother. There's one when you're referring to one's own mother, to someone outside of your family. And then there's someone who you're referring to outside of your family. So taking that idea, next to the image of the woman, we have the kanji for mother. That kanji by itself is the humble form and is read haha. So when you say haha, it's like in English saying my mother. It's always referring with humility about someone in your inside circle, your uchi, to someone outside. So when you're referring to about your mother to someone outside, you will call her haha. Similarly, father below that is chichi. Chichi is the humble form for my father when you're talking about your father to someone outside of your uchi. So these terms also do have respectful versions. So when I want to talk about someone else's mother, someone who is in the soto area, the outside, I'm going to have to add this honorific o before the kanji, and a san after. Thinking about that, we know that o in front of namai makes it more polite to your listener for o namai. O in front of tanjoubi makes it more polite, o tanjoubi. Similarly, san at the end of a name is a honorific. So this is going to be read now as o ka san. O ka san. That's the polite version, the respectful version of mother. Father is going to have a similar principle with a o before the kanji, a san after the kanji, and a change in the pronunciation to otosan. Otosan would be the reading for the respectful version of father. This happens across all the different terminologies. So there's one of these for older sister, one san, outside, as opposed to ane inside, uchi. Older brother, for example, oni-san, referring to someone who is soto, outside, as opposed to ani, inside. So this is the idea of age, where there's a different word based on if someone is born before or after someone else, older brother, younger brother. And this idea of uchi and soto, someone on your inner circle, as opposed to your outer circle.